when I was in the kitchen, I remember what we, I, I stole a piece of meat or something. How do you steal something when you are cooking? The name in this envelope is of the next person to be evicted from Big Brother's house. When people started meeting me, like I, I left the house maybe a few days later, started posting my pictures and people were like, oh, name, she lost weight because she's no more in Big Brother's house. The world is rough. Bale, you have 30 seconds to say your goodbye and leave the Big Brother house. Um, but I think more than anything where I was just like, sheesh, this hurts, mm -hmm. is when people came for my body. You know, I remember coming out and I was trending, but there was a debate about my body. So much so that someone took the, the, the initiative to tweet and say, this girl is not attractive, and even she's not attracted to herself. Palisa. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Why do you love champagne sh so much? <laughs> sure, I, I think I love those bubbles, ne? <laughs> and a champagne also requires, remember, in Ali, that acquired taste, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not for everyone's palate. So I'm also not for everyone. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Yeah. You know, so champagne, man. Now, Liana, we compliment each other. Yeah. And it's, it's an amazing drink. Mm. It's gorgeous. Did you see yourself having a champagne brand one day? Yeah, of course. And um, one of the things I like doing, um, just to like the stress when I go out, is go to a champagne bar. So, yeah. Wow, yeah. I, I, I look at your social media um, mm. quite a lot sometimes, and I'm like, you seem to be that person that goes out a lot. Yeah. Like, Mugruvo. I don't know. What do you do there? <laughs> do you MC or anything else? Um, actually, I don't. I get groovy I'm not, I'm not a professional groovist, mm. but I do appreciate a good time, you know. Um, sometimes I go there, you know, to, like, host, you know, um, I do emceeing. Sometimes I support my friends' um, events. You know, sometimes it's just an invitation. Yeah. And in other instances, it's just me, you know, distressing, letting my hair loose with my friends and, yeah, just having fun. Do they pay you for hosting? Yeah. Do you mind telling me how much maybe, I don't know, I don't know how much is it, but yeah. approximately? Well, it varies. It depends on also, you know, the venue. It depends on what it is that they require from you, you know. So it varies. There's no set in stone amount, you know. Um, it could be a 5,000, could be a 3,000, could be a 10,000. Mm. It, it really just varies. Mm. You know, I've been wanting to have this chat with you uh, most of the time. Oh, well, how I know you yeah. is on Big Brother. And oh, I, yeah. I think a lot of people know you from Big Brother. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I really wanted to know the real Palisa, you know, yeah. besides the character yeah. on Big Brother. Yeah. Who is Palisa? Well, Palisa came in an animal sword. Nah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> born, bred, and buttered in Joburg. Yeah. Uh, very chilled, contrary to popular belief. A very chilled girl, very confident. I was actually surprised um, when people thought I was not confident. I am one of the most confident people I know. Mm. I'm very comfortable in my own skin. I am a mom. Um, I have a daughter. She's seven years old, turning eight. I am a bit of a corporate hen, right? Um, um, yeah, I'm a an account manager by profession. Uh, slash business development manager. I am an entrepreneur, so I've got my business as well, PM Celebrations, where I do events. I am a self-taught florist, so your luxury flowers, I do those. Um, bespoke, gifting, you know, so if you want something with a very personal touch um, that is also very elegant, I am your girl, you know. Um, I do hosting, so like hosting a conversation, you know, facilitating a conversation, emceeing, public speaking. I do all of that. 
And yeah, now I have a former big brother Mzansi, um, housemate, and I guess I am what you would say, as someone in the public eye right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Palisa, from corporate to entertainment, how yeah. though? Well, you know what's funny, ne? Yeah. So I started working, I'm young by the way, I'm only turning 31 this year, and I have been working for about over 11 years. So at 20, I worked for YFM. So I remember, I think I joined Y at, when I turned 21, so I probably joined YFM at like 19 going on to 20, right? Yeah. Um, as an intern. And then I was retained by the company. Um, and then I grew. So I've always been in the entertainment space in one way or another. Because I remember when I was at Y, you know, when they're training you, they'll give you the graveyard shifts and stuff, right? So we had those graveyard slots. And that's where I was exposed to radio. At some point, I remember during my journey as an intern, I used to do news as well, you know? So how the program was set up is that we would spend a certain period of time, uh, maybe two weeks or so, in a department, a particular department in the company for the first half of the internship. And then for the other half, then you would spend more time in the departments that you had interest in, and then you'd also be on air, that graveyard shift. Mm. And that's when I was introduced to, you know, um, entertainment and all of that. So at some point, I did news. Um, I, I really shadowed wow. um, the news department. So I'm very multiversed, you know, I'm yeah. very multifaceted. I've got an interest in um, current affairs, I've got an interest in, you know, um, entertainment, but I grew more in advertising and marketing, mm -hmm. you know. So in the back end of things, you know, revenue generation of the company you know if like you've been in these spaces for a long time you know that the crux of any media house is revenue generation you know mm -hmm. so yeah I've, I've been privileged enough to be exposed to all of those um you know facets of mm -hmm. entertainment so you, you actually saw it in this way that I can actually put corporate and entertainment together Definitely. and run with it. Definitely. That's where I am now. You know, um, I, I, as I said, I've been a corporate hand for a long time. Yeah. But I embrace entertainment as well. You know? Yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be the next Beyonce <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, I'm very happy with the person that I am. So I'm, I'm using this entertainment platform to just showcase who Melissa is, you mm -hmm. know, um, embrace the person that I am, show people that, you know, you don't have to choose one. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a believer of choosing one thing and sticking to it. You can do it all. As long as you think you can do it or believe that you can do it, you can do it. You can be a corporate person, still be in entertainment, have your own little business, be a mother, be a church girl. You can do it all. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a church girl? Of course I am. Are you still the same church girl even now? I am, I am the same church girl I used to be. Ne? Um uh, but I am a new age church girl, <laughs> if there's something like that. Yeah. Um, one thing about me, when you know me, you know, you know, um, I don't hide that. You know, I don't shy away from that. How I will wear my church gear, you know, take pictures, look great. And then the next day um, in my, you know, heels and something else, post yeah. that, right? Um <laughs> And the reason I say I'm a new age church girl is because I believe in having fun as well. You know, I believe in living my life. I believe I'm young at the end mm. of the day. You know, I don't want to deprive myself of, you know, certain things in life mm. all in the name of I am a church girl, you know. I think the church that I'm in as well allows me to be that person, you know. Um, I'm in leadership structures, and even my closest of friends 
are from, you know, that church space. You know, um, my child as well, oh, she loves church. So it's a happy space of mine, mm. which also allows me to live in the broader world, you know. Mm. So these are parts of uh, myself and my life that I really embrace. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Growing up as Palisa, you know, mm. most, of the, most of us, when we grow up, we always have dreams. Want to be a musician, yeah. want to be an actor. Did you always want it to be in entertainment? I did. I did. I wanted to be everything, right? Like, I, I wanted to be everything. I wanted to be a climatologist at some point while being in entertainment, um, journalism. You know, I've, I've always wanted to be in entertainment and I've always had that academic side but I was more into this entertainment thing. I remember being in matric and um, her marks were good. Um, I grade 11 marks, because that's what we used to apply to university, right? They were good. And I wanted to do journalism. So I needed to, you know, apply for a BA in humanities and then major in journalism or whatever. And I remember my APS score was good. It was yeah. good. And I applied. Yo, and these what, varsities, these tertiary institutions, they rejected me. And I was just like, but why? Like, why am I being rejected? Because my APS is fine. You know, I meet the minimum requirements. Snending, I, I'll be told that I'll be put on standby, mm. you know. And the only tertiary institutions that were taking me were private institutions, you know. And you look at the fees, you're like, oh, just for one semester, I could get like a whole year's worth of education mm. in, you know, a normal tertiary university. Then, but my heart was in, you know, being in broadcast. Mm. And because with... Um, tertiary institutions like your mainstream universities, I could not get a radio broadcasting um, qualification, you know. I had to go via, you know, your communication studies, marketing, da 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 and then have a module that covers that, but I could not have a whole qualification that focuses on that, and then we break it down. And I remember being distressed the one time and I was like, geez, what am I going to do? Because like, I don't understand, Hore, why am I not getting the responses I need? You know, the only institutions willing to take me require a lot of money, you know. And then this one day, um, I was at my grand's and I was studying um, for my prelim exam, so busy with prelim, uh, prelims. And mm -hmm. I was sitting there, busy, you know, school and the radio was playing in the background. And then I heard an ad about, you know, calling on students that would want to study broadcasting, you know, electronic media. And I thought the ads at times they're very fast. Because I was so totally at first, I wasn't really paying attention, but I could hear her, okay, you know. And then at the end of the, 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 the ad, then there was a website to visit. So I wrote it down and I Googled it. And I saw, okay, okay there's this institution uh, with the SABC giving away bursaries and then you can study. And I saw there was TV, radio, graphic design and animation. Mm. So I was like, okay. This is great. And the SABC was offering bursaries. And I was like, mm. then I went to school, told one of my teachers about it. And then she was like, okay, I'll print it out for you because I didn't have access to a printer back then. Then my teacher was like, okay, I'll print it out for you. She printed out the application form for me. Um, yeah, and then they called me. I was writing my last test um, for the prelims. And they called me in for an interview. But ahead of going to the interview, they wanted me to record a demo. I've never recorded a demo in my life. Mm. Where am I going to get someone on in studio, you know? Oh, yeah. Then I thought of someone around where I stay, and then we went. I recorded a short little clip, and I sent it to them. So I had to carry it, actually, 
um, also when I went to the interview, I went to the interview, it was an admission interview and a bursary interview. And part of the things that I needed to do, they gave me a new script. So remember, I'm a trick girl. <laughs> I know nothing about, you know, reading news or whatever. But I was like, you know what, I'm going to give this my shot. Yeah. I read it. And long story short, I got a full bursary to study exactly what it is that I wanted. So I didn't have to study communication studies or, you know, whatever in order for me to get exposed to it. You yeah, know? yeah. Studied exactly what I wanted to study, which was radio broadcasting and, um, you know, um, radio broadcasting, radio production and broadcast engineering. Yeah. And, yeah, I grew in that. And here we are now. Yeah. Let's talk about Big Brother. Mm. Um, I think it's on season four yeah, that's now. Um, how did you find yourself doing an audition video so that you can be there? Did you always want it to be there? <laughs> you know what's funny, Nem? So I grew up watching Big Brother. Yeah. I used to watch Big Brother Mzansi, you know, like... Mamela, I used to watch Big Brother, and I remember at times I'd be like, ah, one day, one day, I'm going to be there. And then... Remember, Big Brother took a break for a bit um, before it came back for season three. Well, Big Brother Mzansi, that is. And um, we had Big Brother Mzansi season three, and then there was Titans. Then this one came through. And when it came back initially with season three before Titans, I wasn't really interested. You know, I was like, oh, Big Brother's coming back, yeah, whatever. Um, then Titans came on, and then I'm like, you know, when I saw ads for season four, I'm like, ah, let me try this out. Can I tell you that, even when I was trying it out, I didn't try it out with any expectation. If I were to show you, show you my audition video. <laughs> <laughs> you need to send it to me. You actually need to send it. I was it. sitting on the couch, uh, no makeup on, Straight back, Saka. Nesifela. You know when your braids are just wearing off, ne? And I was like, ah, let me just do this video. And I did the video and I sent it. And then I started getting, like, responses to, you know, from one phase to another. I'm like, hey, man, hi, okay, I'm just doing this for fun. Then I get, you know, another response to another. Till the day I got the confirmation that I have made it. I still didn't believe it. I remember someone saying to me, man, you are so chilled about this whole thing. When are you going to start panicking? Because this is here, this is happening. I think I only believed that it was happening yeah. when I walked onto that stage. And I was like, actually, this is happening. You know, um, I entered from not having any expectations into walking into the house. Yeah. Were you aware of what you're getting yourself into? I was. I was. Um, and as much as I did not have any expectations, I mentally prepared myself, you know. Jeez, man. Um, I was mentally prepared. I was just like, okay, I need to get to get man, yeah. you know. Um, even when I had my psych sessions, you know, where, you know, they have to make sure that you're in the right mental space yeah. for this experience. I, I, was, I was fine mentally. But one thing I did not do... Um, I think I under underestimate the entire experience, right? Because what you see on TV and what you live in the house are two totally different things. Um, I prepared myself mentally for what I saw on TV. Mm. I did not prepare myself mentally for being in that space. Um, even when I left, I was excited to go home, but I wasn't mentally prepared for what waited for me outside the house mm. you know so you just need to prepare yourself mentally for everything because anything is possible yeah, yeah yeah but but let's say you have a daughter mm. you know um for somebody who has a daughter going into that house yeah. it must have been very difficult for it you was. you're it missing was. your daughter uh, it was it was um it was very difficult i'm yeah. not gonna lie i remember when I left home, and she understood where I was going. You know, yeah. she understood. 
I told her that this is what I'm going to do, you know, this is what's going to happen. She understood, you know. But when the day came for me to leave, oh, my poor child, um, she held on to me. She's like, I'm going to miss you. And I'm like, well, when you miss me, you can just watch me on TV. I'm mm. not even going to be able to see you, you know. And then I thought she was over it. And then time came for me to now walk out with those suitcases and stuff. And I remember hugging her. And she, like, held on, you know. And then I started hearing her, like, sniff. And I'm like, oh, she's crying. And when I looked at her, she was bawling her eyes out, but not Shame, actually man. crying out. And then the last thing she said to me when I left, I was like, I love you, mommy. She was crying. And that was the last, you know, image I had of her when I left home. And so that, as a mother... That alone, at that moment, I almost said, whoa, 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 stop this whole thing. I yeah. can't my child. But I remembered that a lot of the things I do are to show her that if you have your mind on something, do it. If it doesn't work out, try something else. I am not kidding when I tell you that my child is like me um, when I was her age, where she wants to be everything under the sun. She wants to be a doctor, she wants to be a musician, she wants to be a dancer, she wants to be a teacher. Like right now, if you ask her, Keke, what do you want to be? She will give you at least five professions, you know. So it was a way also to just show her that the world is your oyster, you know. If you have your mind on something, do it. If you have dreams, go for them. Mm -hmm. Look at your mommy. You know, she moves from having her laptop in front of her and working the whole day. The next thing you see her on TV, the next thing you see her there, the next thing you deliver flowers and balloons with her because she has a mind on something, she doesn't. I'm just trying to understand the reason why you went to Big Brother, right? You've got a daughter, you've got an entertainment industry, I mean, entertainment career, right? Did you go there with the intentions of, I'm going there to get money for my daughter or I'm going there to, you know, increase the level of experience in my entertainment career. It was, yeah, it was a cocktail of reasons. Obviously, the money, the thought of <laughs> winning the money, you're like, eh, too many money. Okay, yeah. let me try it out, right? Um, it was that. It was the exposure and, you know, seeing what it can do for me. But also it was a personal development thing where, you know, you want to learn certain things about yourself, you know. Mm, okay. um, you're just like, am I happy with the person that I am, you yeah. know? Can this experience perhaps teach me something about myself that I don't know, you know? I'm, mm. I'm a huge believer in the case of mechanic of continuous improvement, you know? Mm, mm. Um, so this was that for me where I was just like, okay, what do I have to learn from this journey, you know, mm. and boy, oh boy, <laughs> did I learn things about myself, you know. So mm -hmm. even coming out of the house, I had ticked a few boxes, two million boxes, <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. But the rest, I ticked because I learned things about myself. Yeah, there was sorry. personal development in there, the exposure. There are people, thousands of people that didn't know me before I entered that house, thousands of people that know me now. Has it put me in a better position to grow my brand? Of course. And that's part of the reasons I went. Yeah. I wasn't watching Big Brother 24-7. Yeah. But what are the most silliest things that you can ever remember in that house? Silly. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, um, sheesh. So, what people don't know about me in the house, I was yeah. a prankster of note, right? Yeah. I used to prank people, like, listen, I, I found joy in that. <laughs> and it's so sad that the audience doesn't know that. But those are things I would do. My first victim is my KK, you know. Okay. He knows, he knows that, yeah. that girl, you know. Um, I used to prank people, I used to hide things. They were really disruptors <laughs> in the season. Yeah. I was a disruptor on my own. And I was the least expected person because actually she's quiet, she's chill, she's this. 
But I had that, you know, silly, fun side, yeah, yeah. the conversations that we used to have. And the fact that a lot of the housemates there were younger than me, um, and I see beyond age. So it was very nice to, like, engage with people that are younger, you know, like, just be yourself. Even the lingo that I yeah. learned there, it's some crazy lingo, like, coming out and then, you know, there are words that I use now that I didn't use when I went into the house that I never, like, I don't think I would have used had mm. it not been for that experience. So it was, it had a lot of lighthearted yeah. uh, moments. It really did. I've, I've got a question from one of your biggest fans. Okay. And they are asking that, were you aware that you are one of the people that gossip a lot? I was. In the house. I, I, <laughs> I was. I was aware. <laughs> I was aware. But I think also in the same breath, um, we we also need to know to the fact that a lot of the times people came to me, mm. right? Mm. I remember having a similar conversation with Papa Ghost about a week ago, just after um, they left the house. And he was like, Bali, he was so influential. Like, And I was like, but you give me so much credit. I don't think yeah. I was that influential. And then he was like, those people were so drawn to you. Like, I, I built solid connections. Mm. And I think that's what also people don't understand now that we're out of the house, um, why I have so many good vibes with most of the housemates. Mm. We built solid connections. So people generally gravitate towards me. And mm. then I would chop it, you know. <laughs> like, even I remember <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> I, remember, <laughs> I remember Lawrence Alagona. Yeah. What, what is it about you that made people... So comfortable with coming to you and saying, hey, Bali, this is what happened. They just naturally gravitated towards me. <laughs> and, Mami, I wouldn't say things um, behind a person's back that I wouldn't say to their face, you know. And I would never be malicious. Like, I would never, even in the things that we were saying, it was never malicious. After all, we were in the Big Brother house, the Big Brother world. You mm. can't talk about anything. The only thing you can talk about is the world that you're in yeah. and about each other. Cheers, man. Why do people feel like you are eating a lot? <sighs> you know what, ne? Um, <laughs> I remember coming out and I was like, even, like, yo, it's again. I remember coming out and I saw that thing and I'm like, even, nah, that's not true, you know? Yeah. But unfortunately, I think it has a lot to do with what they are shown. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big girl. I was bigger than the girls, you know. And I would have my meals when we had our meals or I would have it, have it at a later stage, right? Um, but it was easy to single me out because I'm bigger, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I'm, I'm one person, I snack a lot, but in terms of a full meal, not, not really my thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But I found that that's when I got my screen time. You know, um, I remember Mbumi, for example, um, she was one of the people where whoever was cooking at that time would dish up, like they would dish up and we'd probably all get equal portions. But I would not, I don't like big portions. So Nekimu mm. Hafulel, right? Mm. But people don't see Hakimu Hafulel are my portions and eating whatever portion I'm left with. Bab, I don't like a lot of bab. I want inyani and stuff. But essentially... I feel like that's when I got my screen time. And a narrative was created and portrayed because I am a bigger girl. Mm. I left the house. And then the focus was on other people to say, hey, that one eats a lot. Hey, that one actually eats more than Bale. But because when Bale was there, this big girl who is perceived to be of that body because they eat a lot, Bonaja Haol, there's a thing about a cake where I, I cut a bigger slice, but they didn't show me walking into the lounge and sharing it amongst four people. Mm. Do you understand? I, I don't have a sweet tooth. I can more really cake. But now it was driven to think, okay, that huge slice was mine. That was a treat <laughs> for our team. And the people I went to share Jeez, it with man. were not in my team. I shared yeah. it with Mpumi, Else, and Sinai. So it was myself and Bumi Elsa and Sinai. They were not in my team, do you understand? So mm. I was like taking something from my friends and going to share it with them. But that part was not shown, you know. Um, 
There was a lot. I, I saw a lot of things on social media about sending people, like whoever's cooking will be dishing up, and then maybe you have less gravy um, on your dish and you mm. want on your plate. You want a bit more. And I would be standing there with people next to me, but I would be singled out. Holy, why is she still standing there? I just want some gravy and there's nothing wrong with it, you know. Mm. When I was in the kitchen, I remember Hotwe, I I stole a piece of meat or something. How do you steal something when you are cooking? Do you understand? Mm. Like I'm cooking, I'm busy creating sauces. Plus I'm a good cook by the way. I'm busy creating sauces. Kesaya a piece just to like taste. And I think at that time as it happened, there was something happening or there was a sound coming from um Say, yeah, 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 the, the sitting area. So as it happened, like, I was busy cutting, and then we like to do it. And then I looked up, oh, okay. And then I continued what I was doing, tasted the fish, if the, the sauce had simmered in, put it back in there. And people then changed that whole thing to say I was stealing. I was on kitchen duty. How do I steal food I'm cooking? Do you understand? There was just a lot of misconceptions around... Um, that whole experience, you know. And the thing is, if you've never been in the Big Brother house, you would never understand what it is that I'm talking about. I remember making a point about random sounds. That house is surrounded by cameras, you know. Um, behind a mirror is a camera, maybe. Behind a wall, you might find that there are people. Things can fall behind a wall. Do you hear that sometimes? Yes. <laughs> Do you understand? So no ways, man. No ways. You eventually get used to it, but you are always watched. You're always surrounded by people. Yeah. There are walls, there are this. It happens, you know. So people, when you try and explain <laughs> yourself, if you've never been in the house, you're just like, Jeez, man. oh, Jesu, I'm, I'm talking to a brick wall, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I got, oh, sorry. I got to a point where I was just like, ah, you know what? I'm not going to explain myself, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I know the experience I had in the house. I know my truth. Um, you know, people used to call me all sorts of names. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember seeing clips in the gym. In the gym, I would gym, gym, gym. When I'm tired, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. And then I'd get my screen time when I'm tired. It tells people I'm lazy, you know? Take mm-hmm. a nap. There's so many things. Like, when I looked from outside, I'd be like, eh, but there's so much more context to what was being shown. But obviously there's, you know, certain things that were shown that created a narrative. Um, so it was, when I came out, yeah, there was something that was, you know. Um, but I think more than anything where I was just like, sheesh, this hurts, mm. is when people came for my body. You know, I remember mm. coming out and I was trending but there was a debate about my body, so much so that someone took the, the, the initiative to tweet and say, this girl is not attractive, and even she's not attracted to herself. And I think sure. that, you know, that was just something else, you know, and also that was based on a perception and not the truth. Like, we were having lap dances, and at that time, the boys were switching places. So the boy that was with me stood up walking to another girl. I think it was Mbomi. And the boy, Onale Kompomi, was coming to me. But at that time, I didn't have someone, and I was laughing. And then someone took a screenshot, and that went viral. And the perception was that morning, she doesn't have a guy with her because no guy in the house wants to be with that and she's acting like she's happy about it you know mm-hmm. so if you had watched the full video you would understand that there was someone that just stood up and they were switching places and if you zoom into that image you would see that there's Mbumi over there at the corner there's no one there Oyena as well but because it's the big unattractive girl who's not even attracted to herself that does not have someone entertaining her at that time mm. no one finds her attractive so it really hurt it really hurt coming out and finding that hey, people are having deep conversations about my body. And mm. I love it. It's known that TV makes you look bigger than you are. You know, um, when people started meeting me, like I, I left the house maybe a few days later, started posting my pictures, and people were like, morning, she lost weight. 
because she's no more in Big Brother's house, the world is rough. And I'm like, ah, Mara. do you understand? Ah, <laughs> like ah, it's, it's a lot. Like, I meet people, even now, even now, I post pictures. For real, though. Yeah, even now, I post pictures, people will be like, oh, she lost weight, oh, she looks slimmer, oh, the trolling did her good, look at how slim she is. And I'm like, guys, it is common knowledge. TV makes you look bigger than you are. You know, even if I was that big, it, those are not any grounds to bully and troll someone for their body. It's, it's not. You can't go as far as saying um, this person is unattractive and mm. she does not find herself attractive. Jeez, man. But people on the internet are crazy, man. There's a whole lot of cyberbullying. Yeah. A lot. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's, it's just something else. But going back into the house, how, well, now actually, how's your relationship with uh, Yolanda? It's cordial. It's cordial. Um, it's cordial. If Yolanda was to walk in now, we'd embrace each other. We would greet each other. We would hug each other. Um, the first time I saw Yolanda outside the house mm-hmm. was at the season finale. And we, we exchanged pleasantries and were like, you know what? We're not going to rush anything. We are not going to rush anything. Um, during that conversation, that short conversation that her and I had, um, she said she was sorry. I said I was sorry. And we exchanged numbers, and we are going to, we are going to do things at our terms, on our terms, and when we are ready, not for everyone else. You know, because when the season started, Yolanda and I had a very good relationship. Mm. A very good one. So, yeah, we we are cordial. If Yolanda comes in now, I'd greet her and share a hug with her. How's your relationship with the winner? Oh, McJunior. Hola. Oh, yeah. In Pinchan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, we're good. McJunior's my G. Um, I saw him also when I went to go see the finalists yeah. um, post the finale at the hotel. We're good, you know. Mm. Um, he, we haven't really touched base afterwards. Um, I think he's still very busy. And he did say that he's still, you know, I think uncertain or does not want to maintain relationships outside the house, yeah. which is... You know, it, it's totally up to him. Um, he's allowed to make that decision. But in general, that's my G. Like, I was super proud of him. I was rooting for him. I mean, there was a video even on my Instagram where I recorded a reaction mm. um, to the winner announcement. Because myself, Daki, um, Newo, and a few others, Fahima, we were one of those people that were loudly rooting for him, you know, outside the house to say... You know, we are rooting for him. I was very happy um, if my keke were to win as well. Mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, we were rooting for him very loudly. So, mm-hmm. so very proud of him. Very, very proud of him. This season actually had a couple of donations going on. Maria's in this. It's too much. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a lot. There's, there was a, a donation campaign for yeah. Yolanda. Did you ever thought of, let me just try, maybe I can just oh. buy a Kia Picantoniana, you know? Yo, no, I ha- no, no. Come on, man. Yeah, but listen, would, no. You've got a lot of fans, man. I'm sure that you would get like probably 200 people if each of them donate a thousand bucks. That's like... You know what, I... Yo, uh, I'm I'm a believer of um, have your fans offer do okay. something, right? Um, because it's like you know, times are tough. Um, and look, no judgments to anyone who asked for donations or contributions, but I think where I am, times are tough, man. You know. I went into the house, you know, at my own accord. No one forced me to go to the house. I decided where I want to go, you know. And coming out, ish, I can't now be the one again saying to people, give me some snaninyana for being in there, you know. Um, if they want to, they can. But 
I won't go out of my way to say I'm broke. Oh, no, not to say they're broke, but mm. you know, kikupachale te or whatever. You know, a gift should be given to you willingly. Yeah. And yeah, if no man, I think no man. If asking. That's a sin towards how. I, I wouldn't say no to a gift, but I don't think I would ask But what that. if people actually want to gift you something? If they money. want to, by all means, they can. By all means. That's what I'm saying. I would not say no to a gift, but I would not ask for it, especially knowing how tough times are. Times are tough for all of us. Mm-hmm. All says. So I wouldn't say no. I would not say no. And actually, I was thinking the other day, I was like, ah, you know what? Um, I've got this charity organization. And I was thinking of, you know, having a drive, like winter is here. I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe I should have like a blanket drive, whatever. And that would be where I would then call Mm. my people to say, please help me. Let's help those that I need. You know, please help me here. And that, that would be a very most welcomed gift. Jeez, man. The time when you got evicted from Big Brother. Yeah. It was such a funny moment, man. Like, Big right. Brother's like, Bali, and then you, you like, like, jump. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was happening in your mind? You know what, mate? And I think, I've said this so many times, and I think it's so difficult for people to um, believe whether okay, this is true. Yeah. So... I was happy to go. Um, I was happy to leave. That week, I had been saying my goodbyes, right? Um, I don't if you had watched the show in the final week now, they had like a memory wall where they were going down memory lane and talking about all the other um, evicted housemates. And I remember when it got to me, um, Sinai, Mbomi, McJr were the main people who actually shared with everyone how happy I was to leave, you mm. know, um, because they knew that I, 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 was, I had emotionally and mentally checked out, you know. Um, and I had a conversation with Papa Ghost now as well. He was like, that moment, I did not understand. I was just like, there's no way. And mm. then when, as time went by, I actually understood. I was like, actually, she was happy. I was happy. I was happy to leave. I had prepared myself mentally to leave. I missed home. I missed my child. I missed my life, you know. Um, That week was hard for me. It was very hard. I remember there's a video going around where I was in bed and then closed my eyes, woke up, it was in the middle of the night. I couldn't sleep. That In that video, that particular night, I remember at some point I held, I had my daughter's picture, like my family's picture on my bed, right? I remember holding onto her picture, looking at her, and I had tears rolling down my face because I missed my child, you know? Small and other things, like when I left, her two front teeth were out, and I reminisced, I was like, yo, reminisced on all the, the moments we shared, wondered how her first day of grade two was, because I was not there for that, you know, wondered if those two little teeth have grown back. Mm. And I felt like I was missing out on a lot. So when Lawrence said, I told all of them, I did my goodbyes, my friends knew that I was like, I, Sana, I need to go. Mm. I had not even prepared myself to being in the house longer than that moment, you know. So when Lawrence said, and I was like, yes, her body just, her body betrayed <laughs> me, guys. There was supposed to be an internal reaction. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I, I, I was happy. I, to everyone watching this, it was not a mistake, guys. I was genuinely happy. I, I was looking forward to going back to my life. Alyssa, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. What are the plans for Palisa now that Big Brother's out of the picture? Now you've got people yeah. attacking you. Yeah, I pay Lily. Go find her, Ali. Yeah. Um, so my plans are to grow my brand. Um, you know, my plans are to have people know who Palisa is because I left 
home being Baleza came out being Pale. You mm. know, people know Pale, and I would like them to know Baleza as well. So I'm just going to grow my brand. I'm just going to venture back into broadcasting, you know, radio, being behind the mic, having these type of conversations with other people. Um, the cooking thing as well, you know, something amazing is coming there. Um, I'm a great cook. I was dragged for food. So I'm going to turn that lemon into lemonade. Yeah. Um, fashion, you know, oh, um, nice. plus size fashion. Um, people have been, you know, asking, please dress us, give us tips, whatever. Yeah. So those are the ideas I had also going into the house. And so I'm definitely going to act on that. Nice. Grow my business, PM Celebrations. Be a better mom, be a better friend, and just be a better individual all around. And create your own champagne. Of course. Bali champagne. Champagne, darling. Thank you so much. <laughs>